I want to to speak this morning about possessing what God has made available for you. And really, I I could never ever fathom or explain everything that God has for us. It's, so, it's such a magnitude, but, but, but today I, I'm just going to share on some things that God's put on my heart. Uh, possessing one of the things is your purpose. Why you're on planet Earth. You are not a mistake. You are a child of God and there is a purpose and a plan for your life. There's something there that God wants to make available and so that we can possess it is the vision that God has in your life. A vision of grandeur, whatever it might be. And another thing there is your victory. How many people know that God wants every one of us to live in victory? Victory, victory, victory. In 1 Peter, uh, sorry, 2 Peter 1 verse 3, it tells us that God has given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. So God's not a withholder. God's not one there that that just sort of gives a little bit out now and then. God has given us everything. Everybody say everything. Everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Now we are body, soul, and spirit. You can be so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. We, We can just focus on one aspect, but God wants to focus on the whole body. The whole man, body, soul, and spirit. So God wants to bless you in every area of your life. He wants you to know His goodness. He wants you to know that He's good. What He's what He does. So God wants to bless you in every area of life. In John ten, it tells us that we've got an enemy, and that enemy wants to come and to rob, to kill, and to destroy. But that same verse also says to us that we've got a savior that wants to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. And I believe that we've got to somehow or other program our mind to get to reprogram some of the negative thinking that gets inside us. The reason many people haven't possessed their inheritance, possess what God has for you, what God wants you to have, what God has freely given to you, what is already yours. See, there's things there that are already ours that we haven't take, taken possession of. There's things there that God wants you to have that you have not even thought of, but God wants you to have them. I believe the reason that many of us don't receive or possess our inheritance is that we've been sitting beside the blockage waiting for God to remove it. People are waiting for God to do something, but in reality, God is waiting for us to rise up. God is waiting for you to know who you are, what you are, and what's available to you, and what power is given to you, so that you will become not, don't misunderstand me here, just waiting on God, but becoming the church that God wants us to be ruling and reigning with Him. Become joint heirs, whatever it might be. Joshua chapter 1, how about we have a look at that? Joshua chapter 1, amazing book, this book. It's got all the answers. And God... Merrily, merrily, I say unto you, Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> only, at, only at Global Connections. <laughs> the, <laughs> in Joshua chapter 1, we find what I would imagine a very, very negative circumstance. A very, very negative situation where, where Moses died and, and hope is gone and kids are playing up the back. <laughs> it says this, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. Everybody say, it came to pass. You need to write that in your Bible. You need to write it in your book. You, read the, you need to write it because 
Whatever God has planned for your life, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, it will come to pass. No matter how negative the circumstance is, no matter how grim it looks, no matter what's going on around about you, if you can keep your eyes focused on Him, if you're going to put your hand in His hand and allow you to walk you through, it will come to pass. I'm believing that God is going to move in an amazing way as He said He would. It doesn't matter what we see, the world circumstance, the world situation, what's going on here, what's going on there, all the, the negative things, the, the gay marriage, whatever else it might be, all these things, I want to tell you that God is God and it will come to pass. I'm going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. I'm going to have a church who knows the power of my name. I am going to have a church that's going to drive out the enemy. I'm going to have a church full of people who know who they are. We are not a bunch of freaks. We are not a bunch of religious turkeys. We are the church triumphant, ruling and reigning with Christ. Amen. We've got to get a grip of ourselves. We've got to shake ourselves. You've got to get, get rid of wrong thinking, wrong things in your mind. The church today, it doesn't know whether it's coming or going. But I want to tell you, God does. God does. God does. And he spoke to this man. And, this, and he spoke and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am going to give them. The land which I'm giving to them. A land which, and, and I want to say this, friends, there's so much more for you and I to possess in the realm of the Spirit. You might talk in tongues. You might shakabundi every now and then and do a few things like that. But I want to tell you that is only the entrance to the realm of the Spirit. There is so much more that God wants you and I to inherit. There's so much more that you and I can possess. And I want to, I want to be one of those ones that go in to possess it. Do you? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving, given to you, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness of this, of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. I want to tell you, friends, God has got a big territory for us. Amen. He's got much for us to possess. Then he said these words in verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I want to say this, friends. I believe that this is an Old Testament uh, prophecy or, or a vision or whatever it is of what was to come. And I believe today if we hear the Spirit of the Lord, He would say to you, as I was with Jesus, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. Moses, a type of Christ. Uh, Joshua, the church. Going in to possess the inheritance. Going to possess everything that was won for us. Everything that God wanted us to have. As I was with Moses, as I was with Jesus, so I will be with you. And I will never ever leave you or forsake you. If you're fe feeling forsaken today, friends, you've got to kick that lion devil out. And you've got to say, no, I am a child of God. God said he will never ever leave me nor forsake me. God loves me, amen. I'm going to get rid of that lion spirit, amen. Because that, there's an enemy that wants to come to rob, to kill, and to destroy. But we've got one, hallelujah, that wants to come to give us life and to give it to us more abundant. Holy Ghost, spirit, life. That's what we need today. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law. Friend, we've got to do according to everything that Jesus tells us. 
He's given us a voice. He's given us uh, everything. My servant uh, uh, commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do all to do according to all that is written in it. For then somebody else will make your way prosperous. Then you will make your way prosperous. If you want to break through, friends, we've got to take heed of what this word says to us. We've got to take heed of what God is saying in this hour. We've got to listen to the prophetic voice. We've got to listen to that still small voice that's in your ear. You've got to listen to that, the, the word of God. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour. It is not an hour to lay down. This is an hour to rise up. It's an hour to stand strong. It is a time to be strong and very, very, very courageous because God wants you to have great success. God wants you to have victory. God wants you to overcome. God wants you to triumph over every enemy, every lie, everything that would come against you because you are His kids and you are what He is going to use in this hour. God wants you to triumph, but you've got to be very, very strong. You've got to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. You've got to do according to what the Word of God says. And it says, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you'll have great success. Joshua chapter 6, another excellent verses here. This is what he says here in verse 6. Listen to this. Now Jericho was securely shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Here's, here's a promise that God's given to, to, a, to a whole company of people. Joshua is the leader of this bunch of people. He's talking to Joshua and he takes him over. And Joshua now stands before this great city, a walled city, a city that, that people lived in the walls. It wasn't a, a six-inch Besser block wall. This was a massive wall. It was a wall they, they'd say that they ran chariots around. They had chariot races around the top. A massive thing. And, and he looks and, and he says, See, I have given you the city. In other words, I believe what he's saying is, See what I see. Don't see what you see. Friend, we've got to not see what our eyes see. But we've got to see what the spirit world says. Amen? We've got to see what God says. It says, see. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's king and the mighty men of Allah. I'm not just talking about global connections here. Please don't misunderstand me. I believe there's only one church in the world. <laughs> It's called the kingdom of God. So when I talk, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about God raising up a mighty army. God raising up a church triumphant all over. Different people, different denominations, different. I don't care what it is, but I believe that God's going to raise up something amazing. But he says here, he said, I've given Jericho into your hands. It's king and the mighty men of Allah. I want to tell you, friend, no weapon formed against you can prosper if you know who you are and where you stand. If you know God's plan for your life, if you don't know God's plan for your life, you'll be in trouble. Here, here, is, a, here is a thing there that, that looked impossible. Here's a city that, that, that is totally shut up. There's no way in. There's no way out. People are, are just not coming in or out. And he looks at it and says, see, I've given you the city. I've not only given you the city, I've given you its king, and I've also given you the mighty men of Allah. I want to say what God's saying to us today and to the church tri universal, that there's no devil, there's no mighty men, there's no, no demonic force, there's no power on earth that is, that is equal to what God has put inside of you. And God wants to give those things into your hands. There's nothing too hard for you.
Now God says to us, no weapon formed against you can prosper. God wants to, I believe, to show us this example here. What is easier for a wall city to come crumbling down or for you and I, filled with the Holy Spirit, to speak to a defeated devil and tell him to let go and get out. See, I, I want to, I want to, what's easier? I think it's easier to tell a devil that's already been defeated because you see, we have promises from God as well. God gave Joshua a promise. He said, I've given the city to you. How many people believe that God could give the city of the Sunshine Coast to the church? How many people believe that? Come on. Can he do that? Is it too difficult? It's kings. But there's a lot of things trying to rule over this city today. Immorality, sport, glory to God. There's so many different things there that, that want to take the place of God. They're like kings. But God says, I'm going to put that king into your hand. And the mighty men, the mighty men of valor, I'll put them into your hand. Every demon force, every foul thing that's ever raised up, every unclean devil, God will put into our hands and we're going to cast them out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Only believe all things are possible. Only believe. You see, wrong thinking is the problem. Many Christians think they shouldn't encounter problems. Just going to tip throw toe through the tulips with tiny Tim. I'm born again now. Hallelujah. Rush in the blood. The weapon. Oh, and they backslide. Because they didn't think that that should happen to them. They, did. they thought it was weird. I shouldn't have a problem. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I shouldn't be tempted. The Bible says many... <laughs> I hate this verse. <laughs> sorry, 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 Lord. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I shouldn't say that. I dislike it with great <laughs> passion. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I like the end of it, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. You're going to have some things that will come against you because there's a hairy-legged devil that wants to rob, kill, and destroy. But praise God, we've got a Savior who wants to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. Many Christians think they shouldn't encounter problems. You can't find a promise like that in the Bible. Isaiah 54, 17 is very misunderstood. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Many read this scripture and think that no weapon will be formed against them. So when the enemy comes against them, they go, they go down the gurgler. It does say this, it says this, that the weapon that's formed against you won't prosper. It says that you will prosper. Why? because you're going to shout it down. Why? Because you're not going to tolerate it. We put up with too much as Christians. We've got this sort of, we've, we've taken that, 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 that scripture, turn the other cheek. Well, I'm not going to turn the other cheek to the devil. You've got to stand up and call him who he is. He said, I will make your way prosperous. When we don't go this way or go that way, but keep right down the right down the center. Believe in God. God, if God be for me, who can be against me? Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be 
that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Do you believe that today? God, God has given us this word, and, and He wants it to prosper. It's going to do it. It will come to pass if we can keep our eyes focused, if we can be courageous, if we can just continually trust God, if we can continually uh, say what God says and not what your feelings say. I hear too many people destroying themselves by the words out of their mouth. I'll never make it. Well, that's a lie. God can do anything. And God will do anything. I, I, I believe that. Every word it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. When the enemy comes at you, you say, No way. No way you are not going to put that on me. I've had things there that, that I don't understand. You see, the, the devil is the greatest disguised artist that's ever disguised. That doesn't make sense, but I know you know what I'm talking about. He dresses himself up. He doesn't look like the devil. If he looked like the devil, you wouldn't listen to him. But he might come up to you as a nice looking person and they walk up at you and they say, you said this. And I say, I, 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 I didn't say that. You said that and that was terrible. And, and you know, you hurt me greatly. And they go on and on and on. And before you know where you are, you, you go, you, 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 you're copping it all. Well, I want to tell you, friends, no more. I don't care how it gets dressed up. I don't care what i got to know what I know what I know. And if that is not in my heart, I know I never said it. Because if it's not in my heart, it won't come out of my mouth. And if somebody says I said it, I say I didn't say it, and I'm not going to cop it. I'm not going to take it on board. Too many people get themselves all basted in hurts from people. And really it's, it's the devil in sheep's clothing coming to rob, to kill and destroy, to pull you down, to smash something inside you, get you down in the mully grubs, get you down in depression, get you down hurting. I want to tell you, friends, that too much of the church is in depression. There's an answer for depression. Rise up. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up and declare it. What God says about it. Who shall declare it? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. Amen. This is what God says. Let's look at three things which we need to know in order for us to possess all that God has for us. These are just a few. Who's going to condemn the weapons formed against us? Uh, this is your opportunity. <laughs> Who's going to condemn the words spoken against you? It's not a trick question. <laughs> the answer is we are. Yeah, but listen. Just cut the tape so it sounds a little better. Who's going to condemn the weapons formed against us? Yeah. Oh, praise God. Amen. Oh, this is a church. Oh, they know where they're going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've got a crazy pastor. Some people are saying, well, why don't you leave? <laughs> Too many times we're praying and asking God to remove it. But he's saying to us, you remove it. You speak to the mountain to be removed. You speak to that circumstance. You speak to that situation. I don't believe for one minute it's time for the church to be passive, to be religious. Remember Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. I believe when he sees us rising up, standing our ground, 
There's a scripture that says, when you've done all to stand, stand. When you've done everything to stand, friend, there's times there when you just got to stand. There's times there when, when you don't know which, is, which way to go. You don't know where, where, which is up and which is down. You don't know what, but you just got to stand. You just got to stand. That's the time you go to prayer. That's the time you lift up your hearts to God. That's the time you let God get around you. Because only God is the answer. But then you, when you've done everything to stand, you just stand and you say, My God, I put my trust in you. My God, I know you're going to bring me through. God, I take authority over the work of Satan. I take authority over lies. I'm going to tell you, friends, lies, lies, lies destroy too many people. The lies of the devil. We believe the lies of the devil. When he sees us rising up, I believe Jesus says, Hey, Dad, look. They're standing against the enemy. You've got to stand up and rise against it and God will work with you. If you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. If you deny me, I must deny you. Number two is our heritage. Something inherited or our position. I don't know where, where you stand this morning. I don't know where you stand in God this morning. But you've got to know that God's given you a position. It's a heritage. It's something that's been inherited. This is what we inherited when Jesus crushed Satan in Hades itself. When he raised Christ from the dead. Ephesians 1.19 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, far above principalities and powers and dominion and might. Not only in this age, but in that which is to come. I want to tell you, when Jesus, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he did an amazing job. He gave, he triumphed over the devil. He crushed Satan. This is our position, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. When you invited Jesus into your heart, this position became yours. So simple, so very, very simple. Righteousness. Righteousness. Our righteousness is from the Lord Himself. Again, when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you received His righteousness. You became righteous. You became born again. You became yours. You can't earn righteousness. You don't deserve righteousness. It's a gift from God Himself. I don't know about you, but that's worth lifting up your hands and saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When David stood against the Goliath, when some of us are going to stand before Goliaths, and some of us will stand against opposition, we'll stand against Stuff that the enemy would try to throw at you, to stop you. But when David stood before the Goliath, his strength wasn't in his own ability with a slingshot. He knew that no weapon formed against him could prosper. He knew he could prevail over the devil. And if there's nothing else you take away from this meeting this morning, I pray that no matter whatever happens, whatever comes against you, you know today that whatever would come against you, you can prevail over it. Whatever, whatever the enemy throws at you, you can prevail over it. And you will win if you do not lose heart. 
every tongue that rises against us in judgment, where to condemn. And here is young David standing before a Goliath. Something on the inside of him was rising up. He knew that there was something there. It was a battle that was going on in the realm of the spirit. He knew that this enemy was coming out to defy the armies of the living God. He knew that the the consequences of this battle, that if this battle was lost, what would happen? It would be exactly the opposite to what God intended. He wanted to give them the city. He wanted to give the children of Israel the king. He wanted to give the children of Israel all the mighty men of Allah. And here is young David standing there. And the Goliath comes to him and says, Am I a dog? trying to belittle him, trying to put him down, that you would come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Then David said, you come to me with a, with a sword and with a spear and a javelin. Oh, kashaka bundi. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. See, see, you can do this, friend. If something comes against you, don't, don't wimp away from it. Don't run from it. Stand like David did. Run towards it. Say, you might come to me with a spear and with a javelin and with all that stuff and all that. But I want to tell you, greater is he who's in me than he that's in you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to lop your head off, you big foul whoop whoop. <laughs> You come to me with a sword and with a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Friend, that's the secret. You stand before the devil and you say, no, 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 no. The Lord God himself is going to deliver me from your clutch. Hallelujah. Today, depression, I command you to leave my body. Sickness and disease, I command you in the name of Jesus. Get up and get out. (laughs) This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. When David killed the Goliath, And the men of Israel and Judah saw what was going on. They rose up and they shouted. And the Bible says that the enemy fled. Faith is the only way to please God. Have faith in God. Amen. Don't have faith in me. Glory to God. David could have been influenced by his brothers putting him down. Who's looking after those few sheep that you look after your... The king put him down saying you can't fight him. Or he could be moved by the confidence that if God be for me, who can be against me? We are not victims. We are overcomers. We are victorious. Ruling and reigning with our Christ. What do you need to take back from the enemy? I've just written something here that might stir a few things. God is not interested in our philosophy. He's not interested in your philosophy on healing. He knows. He's not interested in your philosophy on tithing. He knows. He's not interested in your philosophy on the rapture. (laughs) He knows. And guess what? He's the only one that does. Even Jesus said that. And I, 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 I haven't had a real big look, but I don't think I've ever seen the word rapture in the Bible. 
You know what? He's not interested in the philosophy of our excuses. Oh, brother, you got no idea. <laughs> Don't talk to him like that. He says, your prayers weary me. He's not interested on this or that. But this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. <laughs> this is that. Don't know the next verse. <laughs> or whatever distraction Satan wants to cause, God is only interested in the kingdom. He's only interested in his people, his church, and is very, very interested in the truth. Friend, I don't know today what you face, but all I know is we can face tomorrow. All I know is that there's got to come a rising up. All I know is that there's got to come a shaking and a stirring. There's got to come that passion that God can stir on the inside of us. I've spoken a lot of things this morning. We've got plenty of time. I know. But it's behind me. <laughs> and i got news for you. That's where the devil is too. He's behind me. But I believe that God wants to set people free. And sometimes when we come to church, we put on our... God bless you, brother. He dies. He dies. When inside, we're aching. Inside, we're broken. And people come in at the car park, metamorphosis takes place. <laughs> That's a big word for me, eh? <laughs> and <laughs> it's exponentially too. <laughs> you can use them all in one sentence. But you know what I'm talking about. Who knows? Is that a yes? <laughs> and we just, you know, we come here, oh yes, brother, hallelujah, yes, Lord, shepherd. That's why I say we've got to change. Real. Real. David said something there a little while ago, and I didn't realize that, but being transparent. I'm just a, just a bloke. She's just a Sheila. <laughs> Fancy one. We met, she was 14, I was 15. Dear Jesus. Two accidents looking for a place to happen. <laughs> Somewhere to crash. <laughs> but we need to be transparent before God. We need to be able to come before Him. So I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. I'm going to ask you to just pour out your heart. How many people catch my drift this morning? How many people know what I'm talking about here today? How many people need to respond to God though? Right? Why, don't, why don't you do that? Why don't you be transparent this morning and say, I need, I need areas in my life. I'm shy. I'm this, I'm that. God's not interested in your excuses. He's interested in you. Did we find it? Somebody found it. Anyhow, before we do that, before we even have any music, 
If you really feel God speaking to you this morning about breaking something that needs to be broken so as that you can go into your destiny, so you can go into your purpose, so you can go into the vision, whatever it might be, your inherit, whatever God's got for you, if you know there's something in the background there that keeps hitting you, keeps plaguing you, keeps popping up, you push it down but it keeps popping up, I want you to today say, I'm going to shout that thing down. I'm going to tell that thing today. You don't have to shout loud. you just got to tell it to get out. Yes. So I want to just help you this morning. So if you like that, before we play any music, would you step out of your seat? Would you come right now? If you're serious, you'll do that. If you're not, we'll go home and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> You know what, this morning, oh, last night when I was preparing, this morning, we, our eye gate is one of our major problems. And we see too much through our eye gate that, that has a, a solution or, 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 no, has a, uh, yeah, one of them. But you know, you might have a husband who's an alcoholic and you come home and you find him in the lounge chair. And I actually saw this with one leg over the arm, stubby on his belly, whatever he drinks. And your eye gate's seen that thing and you think that is impossible for that man to change. I want to say nothing is too hard for God. Amen. And you've got to get another vision. You've got to get another dream. You've got to get another thought. And you don't seem like that. You, in your mind, you've got to say, I will fuse that. I, God, you've given him to. He's yours. <laughs> I see him saved. I see him, his hands raised. It may be some other situation. You might be sitting there with a, with a, uh, a pile of bills in front of you and you think, yeah, there's no way of escape. How can I escape this? And it's just piling up, piling up, piling up and your eye gate sees that and you think it's impossible. I want to say nothing is too hard for God. You might be going through a situation that's nothing too difficult for God. 